there is a very peculiar word that we encounter in the Bible. It is found in the Psalms and the book of Habakkuk. The word is sila. Say sila. sila. It appears 71 times in the Psalms and three times in the book of Habakkuk. What does it mean? Some commentators say it's just a musical symbol. But if that were true, why is it found in the book of Habakkuk? Habakkuk was not written to be sung as the Psalms were. And if it were a musical symbol, what does it mean? Every musical note means something. For example, we know Alta. He is the lowest female singing voice and the highest adult male singing voice. So what would Sila mean, even if Sila is a musical note? I wanted to hear the word of the Lord today. So there is some confusion as to what Sila means, but we want to know what it means today. Are you with me, Church of God? One possible Hebrew word that is translated Sila is Kala, which means to hang or to measure or weigh in the balances. Sila is also thought to be rendered from two Hebrew words to praise and to lift up. Others believe it comes from Salah, which means to pause. From these words, brothers and sisters, the belief that Sila is a musical note is relevant. It is felt that this was truly a note sent to the musical directors or singers or the instrumentalist who performed the Psalms, which was the hymn book of the Israelites. And so I say to you today, what is the meaning of Sila? If Sila means to pause, to praise, to measure in the balance, what can we gain from an examination of this word today? It is said that whenever Sila is found in the Psalms, perhaps they were pausing to praise God about whom the song was speaking, perhaps even lifting up hands in worship. And so, yes, brethren, Sila is not only a musical note. It means that we should pause and think on what was said. Are you with me, Church of God? Because it is found in the book of Habakkuk. And they never sing those chapters in Habakkuk. So it means that if it is in Psalms and is in this other book, it is suggesting something to all of us. Amen? Sila means all of the above. The Amplified Bible says it means pause and calmly think about that to which the verse Sila appears. When we see the word in the Psalms or in Habakkuk 3, we should pause to carefully weigh the meaning of what we have just read. Lift up our hands in praise to God and in celebration. Shall we praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. I'm asking you today to see la, to pause and to think on some things. And not only to pause and to think on some things, pause, think and do something about what is to be done. For the psalmist says, if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? We can observe, we can laugh, we can speculate, or the righteous can pray and do something. Shall we praise the Lord? Why should we pause today? Why am I asking you to pause? Brethren, we might be moving too fast. Sometimes we need to stop temporarily. 
We need a temporary cessation, a break, a halt, an interruption, a check, a lull. Why should we think? Yes, we should think. Some are operating on autopilot. They are running around like chickens without a head. And so they make all kinds of mistakes and they make all kinds of decisions without thinking through the consequences of their actions. And who should we think about? The object of our thought must be God. We should think about him. Shall we praise the Lord? The Bible speaks of God granting the desires of our heart. Sila, pause, think about it, ponder over it, meditate on it, and seek God's direction before you move forward. So let us examine some of these scriptures that have the word Sila. Now, I know very well, as soon as the word is being preached, you have to participate in the word or else you are be you will be distracted. Are you with me? And so I want you to participate. Turn to the book of Psalm. Psalm chapter 3 and verse 2 is where we begin our examination of Selah. In Psalm 3 and verse 2 he says, Many there be which say of my soul, there is no help for him in God. Selah. What does this mean? We should pause and think that there are those who are making judgment about God's favor in our lives. Many are saying of me, God will not deliver him. Many are saying about me, even God is not on his side. He will not be victorious. Why would people sit back and say that God's favor is not going to come into your life? What is the context of this verse? David, the anointed king, had fled. What happened? He had fled. The king, anointed king, flees. Absalom, his son, wanted to overthrow him and force him into surrender. Absalom, his son, had amassed a great force against his father and the people thought that God would intervene and help David, seeing that David was truly the anointed king. But when the people did not see God coming to David's help at that time, they felt that God had forsaken his anointed. Do you think God will forsake his anointed? Will God forsake his people? Many there be which say of my soul, there is no help for him in God. But their words mean nothing. Many there be who may have doubt as to whether or not God is going to come true for you. Many are they who doubt whether or not you're going to prosper. Many doubt whether or not you're going to rise to that level that you speak of. Many might see you fleeing and wondering if God has abandoned you. But remember, deliverance will come. Because God did not come to David's help quickly. There were those who believed that there was no help in God for him. It's a lack of faith, my friends. It's a lack of understanding of the fatherhood of God. It is a lack of understanding of the covenant of God. It is a lack of understanding of the plan of God for his children. Because his promise is clear. I will never leave you or forsake you. I will be with you even to the very end. Shall you praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. So Psalms 3 and verse 4 says, I cried unto the Lord with my voice. And he heard me 
out of his holy hill. Sila. So listen, in the first verse, many are saying that God will not come to my help. Now in verse 4, he said, I cried unto the Lord. Who to whom did he cry? Did the Lord hear him? And the Lord heard me out of his holy hill. Selah, pause and watch that and think about that. God's promises are true. And not because you see a believer is down, he's not out. Look at Psalm 3 and verse 8. You have to participate to receive the word. He says, salvation belongeth unto the Lord. Thy blessing is upon thy sealer. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Now listen to me. Salvation here means deliverance. Now we can de determine the time and the place of the deliverance. But we know the deliverance will come. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. It belongs to the Lord. Yes. And he determines the time and the place of our victory. Yes. From the Lord comes deliverance. May your blessing be upon your people. Hey, victory comes from you, O oh Lord. May you bless your people. Selah. Go to Psalm 77. And verse 7. In Psalm 77 and verse 9, a question was asked. Hath God forgotten to be gracious? Hath, his hand, hath he in his anger shut up his tender mercies? Sila. Come, follow me now. Church of the living God. This is revelation coming to you. Hath God forgotten to be gracious? Have he in anger shut up his tender mercies? Sila, pause and think about whether or not God has shut up his tender mercies. Because the Bible says his loving kindness is better than life. His loving kindness is eternal. And God will not forsake his people. Oftentimes, when we are going through hard times, hardship and destitution and need, we wonder if God has forsaken us. We wonder if God in his anger is not paying any attention to us. But you see, when we do that, we are using our human rubric to judge God. Because God is not like man. God doesn't abandon his children. God is a true father. And he will stay with us until his children have the victory. Selah. Turn to Psalm 9 and verse 20. He said, put them in fear, O Lord, that the nations may know themselves to be but men. Selah. There was a prayer that the fear of God would be in this nation, the nation of Israel. I, I listen, I'm asking all of us Christians to pray for this nation of America. We are seeing some strange things happening as it pertains to African Americans and the police. There came a time when the psalmist had to pray that the fear of God would come upon these people. That the evil they do will be exposed. Are you with me, brethren? That the plots that they have to destroy will be exposed and that people will fear God. Go to Psalm 32 and verse 5. I want you to participate 
Turn to Psalm 32 and verse 5. He says, I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity as have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgression unto the Lord, and thou forgaveth the iniquity of my sin. Sila, pause and think on this prayer. Uh, listen to me, we are all sinners saved by grace in here. I don't know if you think you're holier than I am. Or you are holier than the person who sits beside you. We were born in sin and shape and iniquity. We sin in thought, word, and deed. Some of us will not take a gun and murder somebody. But we can't say the thought has not entered our hearts. Some of us would not walk out of our way and do some atrocities, but we can't say the thought has never entered our heart. Hello? And Jesus said the thought is just like doing the same thing. So that is why we must know that we, when we go to God, we must acknowledge our sins. Are you with me? We must confess our sins. We must not hide it from God. And the psalmist said, I confess my transgression. And God forgave him. Shall we praise the Lord? Praise Pause and think on that. You are here today and you're not a Christian. I'm saying to you, you don't have to walk around with any sin. I don't care what you have done in your life. You could have committed murder like Paul. It doesn't matter what you have done. The blood of Jesus can cleanse all sins. You can receive full forgiveness and walk out of here free, free, free. Because the blood of Jesus has been applied to your heart. Are you with me, church of God? Sometimes I think about how shallow our life is, how short it is. Ladies and gentlemen, I have some friends more educated than I am, richer than I am. They are more popular and renowned but some of them are dead. And I wonder, and when I look at their lives, how could they be cut off so easily? Brothers and sisters, we are nothing, you know. We are nothing. That is why we have to be saved, so that we have eternal life. Hello? So if we are absent from this body, we are present with the Lord. Are you with me? Because we all will die. And that is why you cannot live your life in fear. And you cannot live your life in hate. And you cannot live your life in bitterness. You have to live every day as if it were the last day. You have to love, show love and respect. I was reading an article this morning the oldest woman in America. She's from Detroit. 116 years of age. And her mind is still sharp. And she said the number one advice I give to anybody, which I keep, she's a Christian. She said, I treat people the way I want to be treated. Amen. This has been my number one matter. Yes. This is my number one principle yes. for living. I treat people the way I want to be treated. Yes. Uh, I'm saying to you, brethren, our mortality is short. If we get three score and ten, that is 70. And if we reach 216, we are among the top people live but that is not the life we are talking about when we leave here where we go are you with me and you can't be in the church and leave from the church to hell we got to live a life of forgiveness because we never know when we will be cut off when we can die but plane can go down and we could be on it.
Come on, friends. Are you sure about tomorrow? To whom was that promise? And why do we live today as if to say we are big, bad, and tough? We must understand our mortality and love one another. And if you show love, love will come right back to you. Oh Lord, give the Lord some praise here today. I want to wrap this up today by telling you of a story. It comes from Psalm 52 and verse 3. Turn to that final scripture. We will pick this up next week. We're talking about Selah. A lot of preachers and pastors just step over it and they don't mention it. I want you to know the full gospel of Jesus Christ. Are you with me? In Psalm 52 and verse 3, it says, Thou loveth evil more than good, and lying rather than to speak righteousness. Selah! Pause and think about this one. That some people love evil more than good. They bask into it. And they love lying than to speak the truth. Some are in the church. Some are in our families. Some are on the job. Are you with me? But you must know that they exist. Now what is the context of the sealer? Follow me now, I'm wrapping this up. Saul was trying to kill David. You remember the story? David and his men were running away from Saul. And they came to a house of God in Nod. And there they asked Ahimelech, the priest, for food. Ahimelech had nothing to give them. Beside the bread that was in the temple for the priest. But David and his men were famished. They were going to die for hunger. And so Ahimelech gave them the special bread that only the priest should eat. And also gave David Goliath's sword. There was a man, his name is Doeg. Doeg, an Edomite who was working for King Saul in the same area, went to Saul the king and told Saul a lie. Doeg went to the king and said, you know what happened? The priest Ahimelech has turned against you and is disloyal to you because he's helping David. And the king gave the order. And 85 people died because of a lie. David was hungry. His men were hungry. And the priest, the man of God, gave them food. He had not taken any side. He was not with Saul. He was not with David. He wasn't in their politics. But Doheg went and told a lie. That is why we have the scripture. It is after Doheg told the lie, Ahimelech, his family died. All the priests in that church died with their families because one man went out and told a lie. Sila, you pause and think about that. You're going around talking about nonsense. Pause and think about what your words can do. Yes, Jesus. The priest lost his life. And so David went back and wrote the psalm. That is why this psalm is written with Selah. Pause and think about your words. Doheg 
God is day. Because as night followed day, Doheg died bad. Do you hear me? If you cannot say, uh, last week, it was Friday night, we were talking about some of the sayings of our mothers. And we were asking the mothers, what are some of the sayings that your mother would, would give to you? What are some of the advice? One of the advice that my grandmother and my mother would always say, if you don't have anything good to say, don't say anything at all. The priest died because of a lie. His wife died. His family died. And not only that, but every priest in that house of God died because one Edomite went and told a lie. Do you know what one lie can do to, into a church? What one lie can do into a family? What one lie can do in the office? What one lie can do on your job? Sometimes they come to me with the lies, you know. And I said, listen to me, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear it. Even if it is true, don't tell me. No, I will not be a part and parcel of gossip. Are you with me? If that is the case, I will go home and pray about it. But I'm not going to join you in lying and propagating what I don't know. Don't repeat something if you don't know it's true. Because you can kill the priest and his family. Pause and think on those things. Holy Spirit says, you will destroy a nation. Loose lips. Sink ships. Seal up. But speak the truth. Because the truth shall set you free. Come on, give the Lord some praise. You know, when we look at Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, some people say, how is it that every one of them give a little different version of the story? Like Matthew is talking more about the genealogy of Jesus. And John is just telling us oh, about the Christ. And Mark is the, is the base. Everybody borrow from Mark. You see, sometimes when you see something, brothers and sisters, you will tell that story with a certain perspective and a certain tone. Hello? But whether you are telling it with a different perspective or tone, speak the truth. For the truth shall set you free. And what happened to those people who destroy their families through lies? Huh? What does God do to people who tell lies in churches that cause churches to break up? And what happened to those people who tell lies and cause other people to lose their jobs and their livelihood? You think God just sit back? There is a God who judges. And there is a consequence for our action. Sila, pause and think on these things. Use your tongue wisely. Bless others and do not curse. It is the word of the Lord. Give the Lord some praise. Let us close. Let us close the service today. <clears throat> Someone was inviting somebody to church. <clears throat> and the person said, I will never go to church. I don't want to come to church. That person has never been to our church. I'm just telling you something. One of our members was inviting someone to church. And the person on the street said, I will never go to church because church people hurt me before.
I know people I have invited to church and they tell me too that all the ghost filled water baptized people have not been nice to them. Brethren, this is not a time for you to stand up and give a big round testimony. It's a time for you to live so that people look at your life and see Christ in you. You don't have to tell anybody if you're a deacon or deaconess or minister or evangelist. Who cares about that when you live destitute? Hmm? So many places we go, people have been hurt. They came to church in a healing environment and expected restoration. And they didn't get it. And I'm saying if you are here today and you are like that, you mustn't turn your back on God because people misbehave against you. You must turn your eyes on Jesus. David's son ran after him and he had to run out of the throne and run away in disgrace. But God brought him back because God established him and God would not allow that to happen. When God established you, don't let anybody run you out of God's blessings. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I, I, we're going to take the name of Jesus with you. I, I just feel that there's somebody here today. You have been hurt. <clears throat> Some doheg. Some doheg told a lie. And you nearly lose your life for it. Maybe you, you nearly lost your testimony. <clears throat> I know a lady. Nice, Holy Ghost filled, water baptized woman, you know. And another church sister drove her up the walls until she acted out of character. She couldn't even believe the way she acted. And you could always walk away after you see a thing like that. Huh? What I'm saying. You have to, you, you've got to stand. Huh? What if David had run away and never come back to his kingdom? They wouldn't have the great book we have. Are you with me? So I say to you, stand strong. The hymn is 302. I want you to take the name of Jesus with you as you go. And I'm praying a closing prayer. Something that pastor says today caused you to pause and to think about something in your life. Would you come for prayer? I'm praying especially now for all those of you who are visiting. You may come for baby dedication. You may come with someone today. It doesn't matter. You did not come here by coincidence. I ask you to come to the altar. Let us pray a final blessing upon your life as we close. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, for he has done great things. Lord, you have a way to direct us. Lord, you have a way to challenge us. Lord, you have a way to refocus our minds. Lord, you have a way to lift some weight. From, out of, from off our shoulders. I pray for those who are visiting today as they stand at the altar. You say we should lay aside the weight and the sin that so easily beset us. Lord, I ask you today that you would release them from every weight of sin I ask you to release them from every weight of hill health. In the name of Jesus, we pray, O oh God, for a turn in your lives. A turn to you 
For some have said that there is no salvation. And some have said there will be no victory. But the psalmist said, I cried unto the Lord and he heard me out of his holy hill. Sila! Cry to the Lord right now. Cry to the Lord right now. Cry to the Lord right now. We come to you, Lord, for your help. Lead us in the path of righteousness for your name's sake. For yea, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil. For thou, O Lord, art with us. Your rod and your staff, your comfort. Comfort right now, Lord. I pray for the families represented here today. I pray that you'll provide for them. Jehovah Jireh, you are our provider. Your grace is sufficient. Oh God, from the east to the west, north to the south, we ask you to make the provisions for your people. Oh God, those who might be facing impending issues of life, I ask you, Lord God, that there will be a refreshment of your presence upon your people. A redirection, a refocusing. You have called it out today and we thank you now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I want you to receive it in your spirit. This is a word from the Lord. Doesn't matter who might be declaring disaster over you. God say, I know the plans I have for you. Yes. Don't believe them. Believe the Lord. Because He is the one who called you. He is the author and the finisher. And listen to me, what God has started in you, He will finish it. Amen? Amen. I don't care even if you are sick and the doctor give up on you. The doctor is not God. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Oh call it down man. In Jesus name. I feel something is coming down. Be healed in your spirit. Be healed in your mind. Be healed in your soul. Be healed. Be healed. From every trauma. From every scar. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. For the Lord has not left you. He said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. I'm carrying you. I'm carrying you, said the Lord. Yes, worship him. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, raise those hands. We're going to pronounce a benediction. For the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. May the Lord God of heaven lift up the light of his countenance upon thee and grant thee his peace. Don't move. Go with the power of God upon you. Go with the presence of God upon you. For he is God. It is he who called you, who blesses you. Let me pass you. So we bless you today. In the name of the Father. Let me pass. Of the Son, people of God be in prayer. And Holy Ghost. Be blessed. For his presence is upon you, his promise is upon you.